the servant of God, Pamphilus of Maliano, confessor, first order. This learned and saintly friar was born on August 22nd, 1824, in Maliano de Marzi. His family name was Pierre Battista, and in baptism he received the name of John Paul. He was given the name of Pamphilus when he entered the Franciscan order at the age of 16. On July 5, 1839, he pronounced his solemn vows as a member of the Abruzzi province, and on December 18, 1846, he was ordained to the holy priesthood. Soon after his ordination, he was placed at the head of the departments of philosophy and theology in his province. The general of the order recognized his exceptional talent and ability and called him to Rome in 1852, appointing him to the chair of theology at the College of St. Isidore. It was during this stay at St. Isidore's that Bishop Timon of Buffalo was negotiating to secure a community of Franciscans for educational and missionary work in his diocese. Father Pamphilus had long felt a call to sacrifice his life in the American foreign missions. Two other Italian fathers were as anxious as he to exercise the sacred ministry in neglected regions of the United States. Bishop Timon gladly accepted their offer. Fortified with the blessing of the Vicar of Christ and commissioned by the Minister General to start a new province when circumstances permitted it, the little group of Franciscan pioneers, with Father Pamphilus as superior, set out on May 10, 1855. They reached New York on June 20th. Twelve years make up the span of Father Pamphilius's activities on American soil. What he accomplished in this period seems almost incredible. When one reflects that at his coming there was no Franciscan community of any kind in the eastern states, and few Catholic churches in western New York, these accomplishments seem prodigious. A custody of six formed friaries, two new communities of sisters, one at Allegheny, New York, the other, the Sisters of St. Francis of Mary Immaculate at Joliet, Illinois, five well-organized Franciscan parishes, 22 mission churches, a college and seminary, St. Bonaventure's College and Seminary, and two academies for young women. These institutions point to a ministry crowded with activity and crowned with success, but accomplished at the price of great hardship amid humanly insurmountable obstacles. It was a mystery even to his brethren how he could do so much work. It is difficult at times for human nature to realize it, yet afflictions of body or soul are an unmistakable sign of divine favor. So it seems that Almighty God meant to give posterity the surest proof of the sterling character of this saintly Franciscan when he sent him trials and sorrows after a span of years spent solely in his service and for his honor and glory. This must have been a heavy cross, but Father Pamphilus bore it with truly Christian fortitude and patience, a true soldier of the misunderstood Christ. At the summons of the Minister General, Father Pamphilus hastened to Rome, where he gave a detailed account of his activities in America. He then humbly begged to be relieved of his burden, that he might retire to one of the friaries of his native Italy. In the solitude of the cloister of San Francesco, on the banks of the muddy Tiber, he took up his abode. Shortly after his arrival, this friary was confiscated by the Italian government, and he repaired to that of San Pietro in Montorio. Here he welcomed the opportunity to take up his pen in defense of his faith and to record the glories of his order. Among his extensive library contributions, his history of the Franciscan order is the greatest. He had the happiness of seeing two volumes published 
and receive great praise in and out of the order. As he began to formulate plans for the third volume, he was seized with a serious illness from which he never recovered. He died on November 15, 1876. Father Pim Phyllis will be remembered and loved as a builder, author, preacher, and professor of rare ability, who was filled with the seraphic spirit, Catholic in word and deed, and loyal to the chair of Peter. With a heart going out in tender sympathy to every race, an ardent imitator of the sweet Pavarello of Assisi, profoundly learned, thirsting for souls, affable, kind, and childlike. He has been referred to as the embodiment of the Franciscan educational ideal. On True Heroism what greater joy does a soldier experience than that of victory? No matter how battered and bruised his body, if victory in a noble cause was his, it remains a pleasant memory for the rest of his life. Witness the proud figure and firm gait of the veterans of the various wars who take their places in a parade. Hear the tales of gallant deeds they relate. But if they are proud of their feats, what shall we say of the heroes in the spiritual combat? Can any battlefield compare with that to which the soldier of Christ must go, or any enemy with the cohorts of Satan? How glorious is the victory of the soldier of Christ if he has won the battle against so mighty a foe. With firm step he may cross the threshold of eternity to join the ranks of God's heroes when his general greets him. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Matthew 25, 23. But there are degrees of heroism. Of all the battles we must wage, few require greater virtue than to keep silent in the time of suffering. We long to defend ourselves when unjustly accused. Nature prompts us to seek consolation from our friends. Our evil inclinations urge us to retaliate. And so Thomas Akempis says, It is no small prudence to be silent in the evil time, and not to be disturbed by the judgment of men. The saintly Franciscan, Father Pamphilus, was misunderstood and misinterpreted by those who were nearest to him, those on whose support he should have been able to depend. This test of his virtue was a difficult one, yet he bore it with a patience that was admirable and truly heroic. No word of resentment ever passed his lips. He was a true soldier of the misunderstood Christ. What an example for us, may it impel us to make greater efforts to fight our battles more courageously. Jesus held his peace. Matthew 26, 63. By a single word, Christ could have confounded his accusers and become the object of praise and admiration. But the great general chose otherwise. He knew that his followers would expect to learn from him how to proceed in their struggles with the enemy, and so he taught them the surest lesson, silence. How frequently we aggravate a situation by speaking when our heart is disturbed. We fail against charity, justice, and patience, and instead of victory, we carry away with us only the consciousness of defeat. Let us take heart from the example of saintly Father Pamphilus, who in imitation of his divine leader, preserved the majesty of calmness in the face of trial, and thus gave us a lasting lesson of true heroism. Prayer of the Church. O God, who by the patience of thine only begotten Son, has crushed the pride of the enemy of old. 
Grant us, we beseech thee, devoutly to keep in mind all that he endured in his love for us, and thus, by the help of his example, to bear our troubles with equanimity. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.